Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Inside Your Screen Bite Size Podcast, where we're talking all things Snowpiercer. Um, I'm joined by my fellow co-host, Brendan Horgan. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Tony. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Well, Snowpiercer has ended. Um, Netflix has released episode 9 and 10 uh, simultaneously. Um so we know we know everything that there is to happen. Um, should it's, I go quickly back on our predictions that we made last week? It's it's over. It's, it's all over. over. over or now. is it? Well, <laughs> no, it's season two, but it can't come through. It's only just begun. It's only just begun. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's do uh, start off, I suppose. Um, with yeah, just let's cover our predictions first, and then we'll go through the two just episodes. A quick recap. Um, so you said that Melanie would not die. You were correct. Um, you said Wilford was in a draw. That you were incorrect. Um, the revolution stopped. It did. And uh, Melanie sent to the tell, which in a kind of way she was. Mm. Yeah. So you were you pretty much spot on with um, the majority of them. I, for argument's sake, said that she would die. And as soon as she put on that mask, you knew that, you know, uh, there was, there was going to be a kind of... Um, a release she wasn't going to be killed by having ice blown into her lungs um i said the folgers would come into power um and although there was a kind of there was that kind of uh, sense of it uh, no they uh, <laughs> they got sent off on their own little they, carriage they- they tried really intermittently that they were almost there for about 20 minutes. They, were, they almost had it. They almost <laughs> had it. But then uh, through some uncoupling of carriages, uh, they were they were just sent off in a different direction. But we'll get into that. And I, I did say no Sean Bean, though. So I was right on the no Sean Bean. Um, yeah. But we'll discuss all of those in the few, uh, in, in the kind of uh, upcoming uh, what we'll do is, I think, I don't think we'll spend too much time on episode nine and ten. Like, let's just try and make them as a whole, and then give our yeah, predictions we'll of look, what we yeah, expect we'll, in season two. Yeah, let's just kind of cover the, the kind of nine and ten as kind of one episode. I suppose is probably the easiest way. One long kind of two hour finale. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, just because we'll probably get onto this, anybody who has started listening to this podcast right for a, a review and might be in Europe or watched it on Netflix. There is a trailer for season two that was kind of aired when it was shown in America last night. That kind of isn't really on Netflix or unless you knew about it or watched it in America, you wouldn't know about it. So before pause the podcast now and go and Google uh, Snowpiercer season two trailer, because there's some pretty big spoilers in the trailer for season two. Do you think there's pretty big spoilers? Yeah, yeah, there is really. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we can talk about that towards like the end, maybe as well. Um, so let's let's get into it quickly then. So, uh, uh, episode nine, the train demanded blood. Uh, we see that Pike um, has come down from his his first class uh, carriage to tell uh, Leighton that there's a, an ultimatum. Basically, either the um, the uh, the <laughs> everyone's going to get gassed. Um, or he surrenders and gives himself up for execution. Uh, Commander Gray and Ruth uh, are nominating themselves as the new rulers uh, of the new epoch, if you will. Um, yeah, and Melanie, 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 I don't know what a Melanie is, but Melanie is brought down to uh, the tail end uh, to be executed with a lot of the other rebels. Um, what did you think about episode nine, Brendan? Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought, again, I kind of, I watch these kind of straight after each other. So it's always different when you watch two episodes and I kind of went into the, but them both with this kind of mental thing of it's kind of one long episode, if I'm honest, even though it wasn't, but um, I, I loved the last two episodes of this series. Yeah. No, it's got absolutely loved them. I thought, you know, take note that they might be listening. You never know, but you know the the screenwriters or the script writers for the final season of um, Game of Thrones. Mm. They like this. This is how you finish a season. This is how you end a season. Boom. Yeah, I think I had a kind of thought about this um, because obviously the genre of Snowpiercer is quite flexible. Um, you remember, like, in the first couple of episodes, it was really a murder mystery, wasn't it? Leighton was kind of brought out the tail end to, to um, solve a mystery, uh, a murder mystery. 
Um, then it's kind of changed to a kind of, you know, at some points, an action thriller. At other points, it's a kind of uh, bomb ticking countdown style of, uh, you know, action. It's, it's really been engaging. And I think uh, what they've done quite well with Snowpiercer as a whole is that there's always there's always like something like a time like as I mentioned the kind of bomb scenario like there's always like a bomb time ticking down element to Snowpiercer in like every episode there was the one where for example the the brakes failed or there was a technical issue and you know they had to kind of they only had a certain amount of time to uh, get the engine working again, and in this in in this one as well, um, you also had uh, the the emotional scene of like the uncoupling of the car, uh, and they only it had like a couple of minutes to kind of late and only had a couple of minutes to do what he needed to do to kind of get the um, the first the, the first carriage, I guess, if you will, back back down to the the last carriage to kind of couple them up again. Um, so yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of that throughout Snowpiercer, and I think in a way that that, as you said, like with the um, script writers, they've done a really good job in in kind of relaying that kind of tense, uh, you know, adrenaline sort of pumping uh, white knuckle ride uh, throughout, and kept that momentum going throughout the whole series. Yeah, really, really happy. With just overall, as a general kind of overview, I thought, yeah, I thought the end of this season was absolutely brilliant loved it i absolutely loved it buzzing mate buzzing <laughs> so there has been a kind of change in uh kind of hierarchy um melanie essentially joins up with um layton um to kind of take over the jack boots and they have this kind of plan now i will be honest i'm not sure the science behind this is kind of factually correct um their plan is to get all the jack boots in like what is it like four cars four carriages or something like that I think it was because it was 994. They lost seven. Yeah. They, there were seven carriages. Seven carriages. So their plan, their ultimate plan is to essentially trap <laughs> all the jackboots in those seven carriages, uncouple the car from the tail end section, uncouple the, the car from like those seven carriages, essentially creating that uh, they're, they're going around a, a sort of part of the track where um, the engineer can sort of, uh, you know, Take the first lot of carriages round. So there's a, yeah, there's a fork junction, yeah. and then sort of let those seven carriages, all the jack boots, kind of go off in a totally different direction, and then kind of slow down enough so that the kind of the tail end can then catch up with the car. It all seemed a bit too kind Genius. of Hollywood. Yeah, but I mean, wouldn't the actual <laughs> the, the bottom part or the the end part of the carriages wouldn't that that just slow down to the point of stopping? No, I think because they're going at such a speed anyway that I suppose so, yeah. the, the assumption that's why they really focused on the timings because obviously they'd done the math where and they like there's an awful lot of kind of that type of um, you know what you call it like math let's just call equations it math. going equations on. Yeah. that's that's the word I was looking for where you know they they've all always thought of loads of different scenarios so and that was one where they kind of did the math they were like right Leighton has three minutes and if we don't you know if the train isn't detached within three minutes mm. in essence they had a three minute window to catch up with each other to slow down and for the other one to gain momentum to catch up with it and uh, so yeah that I suppose that was their justification for making it believable. Yeah. And um, once again, like we were speaking in the last episode about Melanie's character. And once again, like she kind of shows um, this, like she's basically giving up her power. She's given up her mantle as Mr. Wilfred. She's given up her, her kind of her throne of being the kind of one in charge and laying it at the feet of Leighton. Now, this is something where I thought was, was really interesting um, because throughout the whole series, Leighton has been fighting to, you know, uh, smash the, you know, join the revolution and let's get to the front of the train. He's essentially now been given that power and, Melanie teaches him a really valuable lesson in this in episode nine. Um, basically, when he uh, uh, decouples the train carriage, there's a lot of tailies that have been um, chained up in one yeah. of the carriages. And he, you know, he's only got like a minute and a half to get them out. He goes in, but they're all chained up. He doesn't have the key. He essentially has to um, sacrifice them. Yeah, um, that was so well done. That was that was a great was moment. In this episode. So well done, because the fact is as well, um, 
you did. I don't know about you, but I kind of bought bought into like when he was checking this watch, he saw the tailies. He's like, can I save them? Can I save them? Mm -hmm. And he has that moment where he's like, I'm going to try and save them. And in my head, I was like, oh, he's going to save them. Yeah. That's what I thought. I genuinely yeah. thought he's, he'll get them out and they're safe. And they're, it's that moment of realisation where he can't save them. He doesn't have enough time. And I thought that was so well done. Yeah. No, it was really good. But it also, in, in a kind of that ruthless way, like because they meet up again, they they couple the train characters up again. Uh, the Folger family, uh, well, the, the mother and the father of the Folger family are on the, on the kind of seven carriages to get, you know, put on the wrong track so is uh uh commander gray uh, and all well I, I suppose the majority of the jack boots um, yeah, so the really kind of understand, yeah. the enemy has been kind of sent out uh to to die in the cold i guess um yeah. but freeze yeah melanie death. freeze to death yeah but melanie uh when they rejoin uh leighton says oh you knew they were there and she's basically like this is your life now get used to it you're gonna have to make um some really tough choices but that's what you wanted. And that's the power uh, with great power comes great responsibility yeah. as the old Spider-Man, you know, <laughs> motto goes. Uh, it very much was that it was that moment is what of like, right now, you know what I've had to deal with. Yeah. But um, there was a question I had for you as well. There's a kind of segment where the school teacher um, gets a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that part? But that didn't really go anywhere. I don't think it's, it's meant to as of yet, but the only thing where I thought that linked in was, was Ruth ended up with that gun? Did she? Ah, I, was, okay. was that not the gun that Ruth... I thought it was a different gun, own? but it okay. would make sense. I think there was like maybe a deleted scene or maybe... It, fe it felt like to me that there was a deleted scene where perhaps Ruth did um, have an interaction with the school teacher and took the gun from her, but we didn't see that. So it's kind of been left outside uh, for the audience to kind of, you know, make up, if you will yeah um so then we're going into episode 10 uh and this is really i guess trying to hammer home the fact that melanie has her kind of experience she goes to the third class um to the night car and she has like her experience where she remembers her daughter and she misses her daughter alexandra um and it was at this point that i kind of thought to myself maybe this was me um trying to kind of get ahead of the curve but i was thinking i pretty much think that alexandra is going to come back perhaps in season two and you know, maybe wilford will have her uh, yeah i know the ages don't add up and it was something that i did um kind of correct myself in thinking but i was kind of brought into the same way of thinking as you but um it was uh, what's the character called uh, miss audrey yeah i but then halfway through thinking that i was like no miss like the daughter They've only been seven years, so the daughter's only going to be about seven or eight years old. But oh, you a, thought Miss Audrey was going to be a daughter? Second, I thought it would be, <laughs> I am your daughter. And I was, but then I was like, no, that really wouldn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's interesting, though, because uh, we find out later on that, you know, so let, let's, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, there's a moment with LJ and Oz uh, with a kind of maybe a really misconstrued metaphor of like two bad eggs. I um, before that we have to cover the case just because obviously how LJ got to meet Oz is the case that kind of an awful lot of the tale have kind of started running amok on the train Luton, and yeah. uh, looting and you know one of those main ones is Pike Pike takes over LJ's first class and it's like um, a debauched kind of area isn't it really where people are just like having sex and uh, drinking and um, getting getting a haircut why wouldn't you yeah you know? he actually had a queue going for people to have sex in one of the first class beds mm -hmm. well i mean it, this is the kind of i guess the fallout from the revolution uh it's kind of tail enders now that having all this kind of uh, all this kind of quality of like fresh foods and uh, all these things that they haven't experienced and perhaps you know there's a part of it as well where two people are uh, two younger tailies are have stolen some lettuce and like you know Leighton has to deal with them um, and he's already kind of see like you can already see maybe the cracks starting to show where you know order is coming back into effect rather than freedom um, but once again in that kind of microcosm that Snowpiercer is if it kind of represents you know democracy as a whole as you know our country as a whole if you will then it is the kind of case of if you let everyone have uh, the same kind of like there, there has to be a kind of power struggle there has to be you know class is maybe like yeah, I mean, think you mentioned it last week as well that as as much as the kind of theory of it sounds good um sometimes the practicality isn't so much 
Yeah, and I think this episode tries to kind of demonstrate that. And you've got, you know, a Roach is kind of, even though Roach is kind of on side now with the tail and, you know, he's kind of part of the one train theory, you know, Roach kind of constantly is reminding people of like, this is what you asked for and look what's happening. Like, mm. you know, there's, there's a few scenes where they've got, you know, some of the, um, what would you call them, like the greenhouses where they grow some of the vegetables and yeah. stuff. And they've all been pillaged and, you know, like the first class cabins have been taken over. You know, there's, there's that scene of all the first class kind of moaning. And it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to break into our apartments at night. And mm. so, you know, and so it's there. It's there. It's already, you know. But then uh, there's, a, uh, there's a signal that's being heard from the, uh, from the engine uh, yeah. playing classical music. Uh, and uh, Harvey... Uh, zones in and they find out that there's another train uh big alice uh if you will and Did uh, not see that coming in no no i didn't either that that, that was that scene where they all were kind of like the, the signals right on top of us look out the window we should see it and we see another train i what that was a what the fuck moment yeah, that yeah. was fantastic that's didn't see that coming no, I mean, we, we were kind of like, I think throughout this whole kind of bite-sized podcast series of Snowpiercer, we've been alluding to the fact that, you know, was Wilford in a draw? You know, I was saying like, maybe he snuck on board and he's been online, like never would have thought that there'd have been another train. Um, so yeah, uh, the train, uh, I assume has kind of been trying, following them for the last seven years or the last seven revolutions. And each time that Snowpiercer is like each year has been getting slower and slower. So it's kind of finally caught up with them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only kind of theory the I can explanation. go with. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, come in from behind and uh, attach themselves in a very kind of transformers like way. I did have to kind of, I was going to sort of say like, uh, when, when they, when big Alice, falls in behind Snowpiercer. I was thinking to myself, how are they actually going to board Snowpiercer? Um, but the front, the front carriage turns like, does it, I, in my head, I was just going, and I was yeah. like, you know, it kind of becomes this claw, this claw hand or something. And just kind of, it's almost into like it. there's, it, there's shades of like, and maybe it, um, without a doubt, there's probably a slight kind of tribute there to like, you know, your likes of star Wars or alien. Is there scenes where you've got the, just the, the much bigger spaceship who kind of eats, the smaller yeah, one yeah. and it almost seemed like that like the kind of the freight train as they're calling it kind of or big alice um mm. is big alice because it just can eat up snowpiercer yeah and um so yeah it's essentially uh it is wilford um but uh yeah it's it's kind of then you know the first class coming all the way down Ruth gets involved she wants to be the first person of hospitality to greet Mr Wilford um was there and... part of you there I'm not going to lie the minute so obviously we've got big Alice has kind of attached itself to to Snowpiercer and basically hits the brakes right um and that moment where kind of Ruth is like, really, it's Wilford, it's Wilford. She gets the kids down singing the <laughs> yeah. Wilford choir song. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm going to have to look at the lyrics of that because I'm bad. they're bound to be funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, she's got the kids down, but she's like, I want to be the first one to see it. Now, I was wrong in my thought process, but the minute Ruth was like, I want to go to the front and, and Leighton's like, yeah, you be by my side when the door opens. Mm. I so thought Ruth was going to die. I thought it was going to be a kind of action scene to start with. I, um, yeah, I like the way he played it instead of like, um, you know, antagonizing Ruth. He kind of he does that thing <laughs> of like, yeah, you come with me. You know, I can throw you in front if anything kind of bad happens. <laughs> totally um, late <laughs> intention in that, mate. Yeah. Like, Brilliant. But um, yeah, um, and also as well, uh, so Big Alice docks with Snowpiercer, um, allowing uh, Wilford to interface with the systems and essentially gain control of Snowpiercer, shuts down the train, like we, we come to an abrupt stop. Uh, Melanie isn't too pleased, she goes outside to unli uh, uncouple the link, um, but when the brakes go on, she's slammed from the roof, throwing her off. Um, at that moment as well, I thought, oh, are they, are they going to end this with, you know, perhaps Melanie dying? But, you know. Until the train stopped. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that. I Up until the train stopped, I was like, they. I, I thought you were right. I was like, oh, wow, they are going to kill off Melanie in this, you know. Um, and then I thought that would be the kind of... Um, 
also i don't know about yourself but the minute and i i'm not i swear i'm not kind of like trying to but the minute i saw there was a second train obviously there was two things that triggered in my head i was like well that's where wilford is Mm. and the second one was i instantly thought right melanie's kid is on that train without a doubt wilford has her kid on that train (laughs) so when we eventually got the reveal of and i forget her name is it alice alexandra alexandra so the doors open and the big reveal is it's melanie's daughter who has come to welcome them um so that and that's where they kind of then kind of almost cut to the outside of Jennifer Connolly's can, character standing up. Mm. Um, but if I'm on again, up until the brakes hit, which I wasn't expecting either, I did think they were going to kill off Melanie. The minute the brakes hit, I was like, no, actually, that's they now that that saved Melanie basically. Yeah. I mean, you can sort of see as well, like, I, I think perhaps they, you know, we, we've spoken before about the kind of fact that really in this series of Snowpiercer, there's only been like uh, about six to eight rooms that they've used kind of consistently. Uh, you've had like the third class area, um, which is like kind of slum alleyways type, you know, box containers. You've got the tail end section, which is just literally bunk beds. Then you have like... Um, the first class area, the kind of canteen area, if you will, and then the the night car. Um, I think with the kind of when Melanie st- pick, uh, picks herself up in the snow and we kind of, the camera pans back and we see the kind of, the enormity of the train. I think it kind of tries to kind of send you, the, the audience, the kind of scope of how big the actual train is. Uh, and maybe it's alluding to in series two, maybe perhaps now that there's effectively two trains, you've got Big Alice and you've got Snowpiercer. Um, maybe we'll see uh, a lot more sort of scenes and a lot more different um, areas, if you will, because like I think they mentioned that Big Alice was the kind of prototype. And like she's she, you get the impression that, that the prototypes are more cumbersome, a bigger version of Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer is meant to be this really sleek, a smooth kind of streamlined, uh, fast train, whereas Big Alice is just meant to be a, a big bloody train. Yeah. Um, so hopefully uh, in series two, we'll be getting uh, new scenes, new new areas and, and bigger areas as well. So. Uh, one can only but wait. But yes, uh, as you're right, as you said there, Brendan, uh, Alexandra comes to the door. Now, I did notice something. Did she have an arm missing or an, a hand missing? Ooh, I didn't see that. I was pretty sure, like, when she kind of stepped through, uh, it looked like, it looked like, you know, um, like the kind of the end of, like, I didn't see a hand. I didn't see a left hand, I think it was. I didn't see the actual hand itself. And I think the kind of fabric had been kind of like put into a knot or something. It was very yes. subtle. Well, I stay, could be completely wrong. Stay there if you hear any background noise. and uh... Because she does look a bit pale, the character, the, the daughter figure. And you do have to kind of wonder, you know, it's been seven years. And she's been with uh, Mr. Wilford, who we know now is like this kind of, uh, egomaniac sort of uh, well we don't really know much about his character yet but it'll be interesting to kind of see whether you know Alexandra and Melanie when they meet up will it be a, you know, a happy reunion or would Wilford have turned Alexandra against her you know it's it's one of those kind of ones we're going to find out in series two uh, obviously but um, his arrival is perhaps the biggest change uh, I think we're going to we're going to find out in series two and how that affects the current oh, hold characters. On. Sorry. I, I was this, I'm actually just watching back to see no, if she has a hand missing. It looks like she might do. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. It looks like she has a hand missing. That so does... maybe, maybe big Alice has its own kind of, uh, maybe the same form of punishment. Who knows? Who kn- yeah very true yeah it does look i'm trying to like get this now where i can pause it Bang on. <laughs> yeah it looks like she's got a hook or something like that on her, mm. on her arm it wasn't it wasn't overtly um no right like there but it's it, well it, it's well spotted that mate because yeah. it actually just while you were talking i'm watching the scene and the entire scene they don't show her hands oh, she okay. has a left hand hold on I'm just trying to pause this at the exact moment (laughs) so that I can zoom in. Um, But another point while I'm doing this and you made the point there of, and which is why I brought up the trailer. So for anybody who um, watched this in in Europe on Netflix, um, they wouldn't have seen the trailer. So they wouldn't actually know what is revealed in the trailer, which is. Bastard. 
Sean Bean. Sean Bean is indeed Mr. Wilford's. And yeah, like you said, from the, the, the quick, like, what would you call that? A little mini trailer montage? A teaser trailer, yeah. Teaser teaser trailer teaser season trailer, two. Yeah. Um, the way he looks like he's, as we expected him very much to be, this very, he's walking with a kind of a, a stick and it doesn't look like he needs the stick. It looks like very much a class type yeah, of more of a kind of fashion prop um and he looks like he's in a kind of very elegant suit uh with some furs fur trimmed uh coat whatnot sort of thing so yeah i mean i think this is this is the part now where we essentially kind of talk about our predictions for season two um we know like you know in the kind of Macbeth way uh he's been kind of wilford's been alluded to throughout the whole of series one um his character has initially been told as this benevolent sort of uh, an enigmatic billionaire. We later find out from Melanie that that's not the case at all, that, you know, he only wanted the train really for himself, uh, for his own self-preservation, so he could sort of enjoy uh, all the kind of vices uh, that, you know, were on offer. Um, now we know as well that Big Alice has a lot of kind of supplies on the, on the train, so Snowpiercer needs those supplies. Um, I think... I think it's going to be either one of two things. I, I think it's going to season two is going to pick up directly straight from the end of this episode. Oh, a hundred percent, it will. Because oh, they had like ten. Even minutes. just going by the trailer, you almost see Wilford walking off of Big yeah. Alice on onto Snowpiercer. That's what is alluded to in that in that trailer. Yeah, I think series two will straight start straight off the bat. It will be Wilford. It will be Wilford coming out, sort of thing, and you know. Uh, liaising with Leighton and Ruth. Um, and, and one of her, my favorite lines from this episode as well is uh, from Ruth, actually, where she says, teal is the color of diplomacy, uh, referring to her, her hospitality uh, wear. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I just kind of popped in my head there sort of thing. Um, yeah, no, uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, once again, I think, you know, Leighton and Melanie are going to join forces against Wilford. But we're going to obviously have a, a slew of new characters uh, from Big Alice, I guess, as well, because obviously the people that were left behind uh, will be on uh, Big Alice. Um, so we'll see kind of new interactions. I think hopefully my my thought of it is, is that they kind of maybe veer away from the kind of the class, the revolution type stuff. Um, now that we have Wilford in place, um, he's going to throw that into disarray. So I'm, I'm hoping that kind of takes a bit of a backseat. It was done very well in this series. Um, and already the kind of democracy that, you know, uh, Leighton has kind of built is under threat. So I think Wilford's going to sort of try and seize onto that and uh, know that there's been a kind of war that's happened, a 16 hour war. And he'll kind of put his, get his fingers into a lot of pies, I think, will be my prediction. Yeah, well, they kind of the thing about it is, is they kind of have only really one choice, which is to surrender because he's taking control of the train. Yeah. So they kind of have to surrender power to Wilford and whatever Wilford wants. Um, in regards to season two, not a clue what's going to happen. There obviously is going to be this this Wilford versus the train or will there I've got a funny feeling that Wilf uh, they may even play you know Wilford offers in I've got a feeling that one of the first things that's going to be revealed is that maybe Melanie hasn't been completely honest again maybe um, yeah and yeah. I think what I will be very intriguing is what has Wilford taught Alexandra about her mother you know yeah i think that's going to be like the emotional focal point really for series two is going to be the relationship between alexandra and melanie um because we know like leighton like there's two characters in the in the whole series that i haven't really sort of gelled to one of them's jinju and the other one's zara um we know that leighton has a baby on the way um but i don't really care to be honest um nothing about their relationship really kind of yeah made me like, like other people like Josie like you know that her relationship with Leighton I, I kind of connected to even though her death when it came I, I kind of thought well okay that's that's kind of you know fair I guess or not fair but it kind of made sense to me uh yeah I don't know I, I think if they kind of can pull it off then I think the emotional weight behind Alexandra and Melanie will be the kind of focal point yeah so, it's so. almost the boat it's almost the same though so it will be both I think the the real conflict, emotional conflict um, for Melanie, excuse me, and Leighton in series two will be trying to protect their children. Mm. 
Melanie yeah. will, you know, however Melanie gets back on the train, we're going on the assumption she's getting back on the train, right? Um, and uh, so how, what's her relationship with her daughter? But instantly there will always be that overwhelming thing of Melanie will just want to protect her daughter no matter what happens. And I think Leighton will be the same with his kind of unborn child so mm. they will both have that conflict of you know no matter what happens we need to protect our children it's not about us anymore so i think that will bring an awful lot of kind of you know emotional conflict and roller coasters within season two yeah well the scope is open and varied because as we said like uh, i think the engineer did say a lot of what was on big alice but the writers uh, can have a, a field day now. They've just added on like an extra train. So we don't know what's in Big Alice and they could bring that, they could bring anything <laughs> to season two, really, uh, if you think about it. So uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see where they go. Um, let's get your final thoughts on this, Brendan, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap this up for the, for the series uh, of Snowpiercer. Yeah, I thought it was a really, really good ending to a really, really good series. Um, right up my alley i thought overall you know often uh, maybe it's my own fault but i often have quite high expectations of things um maybe that's ne not necessarily a bad thing but maybe i have too high expectations this series completely lived up to my expectations it was really good from start to finish loved the ending i always hate a good series with a bad ending nah they absolutely nailed it with this so yeah i'm really really looking forward to season two which looks like it's coming sooner than we thought yeah well i mean hopefully the the current climate with the pandemic um i don't know if season two was already in production yeah, so um, we were talking off air just before we started so i had a look online and by all accounts they had pretty much finished recording season two so okay. it's like there won't, you know, we won't be, we won't by any accounts have any real delay uh, in regards to what the original, I'm not sure what the original release date would be or what it is, but uh, yeah, it looks like from what I've read, according to digitalspy.com, they'd pretty much finished the entire season two. It wasn't interrupted massively, so... Yeah, so it must be in post-production then. So hopefully hopefully we might get season two a little bit earlier than we were uh, expecting. Um, maybe next six months, do you think, Brendan? Maybe, if we're lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's it from us, guys, uh, for Snowpiercer. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed our, our waffling as we've been going through episodes one to ten. Brendan, why don't you sign us out? And then we'll, uh, we'll find out what the next, uh, next bite size will be that we get into. Yeah, so check out all our um, podcasts. On They're available on Spotify, on SoundCloud, on Apple Podcasts. You also put up all of our uh, bite-sized podcasts on YouTube, and there's loads of other stuff on YouTube. Tony's got loads of like, really cool game reviews. There's some movie reviews on there, and, um, yeah, all kinds of greatness. So check us out on all those platforms, and if you want to get in contact with us, uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram, and it's at inside your screen. You are a screen, so you inside your screen um, on, on both of those platforms. So yeah, please get in contact. Let us know what you thought of Snowpiercer and all our other podcasts. Yeah, we got a brand new podcast out a couple of days ago with a, a review of your the new your Will Ferrell movie Eurovision uh, song contest. So yeah, there's loads of stuff that you'll love it all. Tune in. And teal is the colour of diplomacy. Inside your screen.